fun. I'm going to show you guys how to dial in a bean bag that I just got from Brewpoint. I talked about it in my last video. We're going to do some sugar cubes in, <coughs> in the shape of a flower so that we can use them for springtime. I've noticed that I've cut back on uh, my sugar amounts that I like to use, especially in the morning. For iced coffee, I go a little more, a little more ham. But in the morning, I like to just use a little bit of sugar. I started using my Chobani uh, Zero Sugar because for a while I was using the Planet Oats. But those grams, those grams of calories, I know it's super low either way compared to others, but they add up. Okay, so I just went back to the Chobani Milk. It's zero sugar and it's still creamy. It's still beautiful. I love it. We're also going to do some sugar cubes because I've noticed that in the morning, I like just a little bit of sugar and I feel like the sugar cubes that they sell in the store are just the perfect amount of sugar that I've been wanting or liking in the mornings. For my iced coffee, I still like a little bit sweeter for the evening or the uh, the afternoon, but I thought it would be fun if we made our own sugar cubes. I bought a like I bought some molds that are in a, the shape of a flower, so I think that's going to be super fun to do, and I looked them up, and it's super easy to do. So we're going to do that, and so, so we're going to dial in sugar molds. Oh, the Bambino is gone. I had it for a while. I think it was on my coffee bar for about two months. I thought that it would just make sense because a lot of people bought it over the holidays, wanted to know how to use it, and honestly, I don't think you need to see someone use your machine so that you can learn how to do espresso prep work. I personally learned how to use the Bambino based off somebody else using a completely different machine. Once you know how to dial in beans, it honestly does not matter what machine you get. So I feel like this is the year that I just wanted to declutter my home. And I feel like the coffee bar is one thing that was starting to look very cluttered. But even now, it just looks a little bit more open, a fresh, a, a breath of fresh air. I always have a hard time saying that saying. Um, I had a whole bunch of cups up here that I just stored away. So yeah, I wanted to tell you guys the Bambino is gone. I have my Escaso. I did sell the Bambino um, to a follower on Instagram. And so I'm slowly trying to save up for the La Marzocco machine. I've always wanted that machine. It's a little bit pricier. It's definitely an upgrade from the Escaso. And so I, I said it before, I don't want to be in debt when I get it. So I'm slowly going to work myself towards that. So yeah, that's a, just a quick um, insight of what's to come later on in the year. Way later. I don't think that's anytime soon. I'm going to take it slow. But the Bambino is gone. I'm going to be working with the Escaso. So we're going to dial in our beans with the Escaso. But you can use whatever machine you have. It's really not going to matter. Because even if I use, let's say, a level a setting 7 on my Breville uh, grinder, it's most likely not going to be the same for you, even if you're using the same beans, the same brand, everything. It's literally just dependent on the bag of beans that you get. So with that being said, once you learn how to dial in beans, what to look for, those baseline guidelines, things like that, it doesn't matter what machine you have. We, we can all follow along regardless of what espresso machine you have, and I'm gonna show you how to do it. So that's what we're gonna do. Also, I'm gonna get rid of the Valentine's Day decor. It's not a lot. I have like this, the heart stuff, the heart garland, um, a few heart cups and mugs, and I do wanna take out the spring-related stuff, so we're gonna do that today as well. So lots of stuff gonna happen today. Hopefully you guys enjoy this video. Let's get started. I hate when my camera does this. I recorded everything and then the battery died and then nothing was saved. But what I was saying is that we're going to dial in the cardiologist from Brewpoint. This is one of their medium rolls. I love their medium rolls. They have so many good blends. I've never tried this one. This one is chocolate covered cherry notes with shortbread cookie notes. It sounds delectable. So we're going to dial this in. I already have them in the hopper right here. I have two bags. So what I was saying before is that I like to purge out everything that's in there. So you didn't see it, but I made sure to turn on the grinder and wanted to see what else was in there. A few little like grounds came out. So I know that the grinder is empty from the previous beans. Nothing's going to mix in. And so we're going to start with the last setting that the grinder was on just to see if we have to tweak it from there or sometimes it works out just in that setting. 
I'm gonna use a scale. It's crucial to have a scale. So we're gonna weigh out our porter filter and make sure to tear it. And then we're gonna try for 18 grams of coffee. Um, I haven't programmed it yet, so I'm just gonna use a top button. But we want 18 grams. It's funny because I feel like sometimes I know what 18 grams looks like at this point. Let's see. Uh, it needs a little bit. We're going to weigh it either way, but I just always like to bet against myself to see. 18.6, so maybe I shouldn't have pressed it the last time. Um, you know what? We're going to leave it at 18.6. Sometimes I like doing 18.5, and 18.6 is not too far out. So we'll do 18.6. A 1 to 2 ratio would be 37 grams. Um, so we're going to try to do 37 grams within 25 to 30 seconds because we did 18.5 grams. Does that make sense? So when you double 18.5, you get 37. And you want those 37 grams to come out around 25 to 30 seconds. We'll obviously taste it to see if that tastes good, but that's a good starting point to gauge um, to get the good notes coming, to get the notes coming out of it, to get a good espresso shot. So, so I'm gonna prep it. And if you guys can tell, I am not completely anal. Like I said, sometimes I'll do 18 grams, sometimes I'll do 18.5. It doesn't really matter as long as your basket fits that amount. What really matters is, is the grind gonna be okay? Is it gonna come out too fast, too slow? But we won't know that until we see this. You just wanna make sure that the ratio is one to two. So since I used 18.5, we're gonna try to do 37 grams out. I'm gonna take this tool, this is like the WDT tool we use, needles to kind of break up clumps. Honestly, sometimes this grinder just grinds gloriously, so you don't even need to do this too much, but I do a little bit. Tap it down just to push the coffee down, and then we're gonna use this tool right here. This is called a distributor and I just put it on top and it makes a flat bed for the coffee so that when you do tamp it, it's not all uneven. And then this is the final tamp. We're gonna put a screen over it. This just allows an even water distribution and then it also protects your group head from getting coffee grounds and getting dirty too fast. I like to brush off any coffee beans that are there. All right, so this is where the magic is gonna happen or the stress and anxiety. I'm gonna put my scale right here. I'm gonna use this little cup. We're gonna tear it just to make sure that there's no, nothing there, okay. So my machine has a timer here when I start the shots, so I don't really need to use the timer here. I used to time it when it would touch the bottom of the cup, the, the coffee. Now I just count the pre-infusion because I've gotten a lot of people, coffee snobs mainly. <laughs> I didn't really care. I felt like all the shots were good, but we'll just let the machine count the pre-infusion, but we want 37 grams within 25 to 30 seconds. So let's go. I'm gonna program it first um, manually. So with my machine, I just push down and when I, I see 37 grams within that time frame then i let the button go hopefully that makes sense Let's see so it started counting already and right now it's at two grams three grams so we're gonna get to 37 grams hopefully in 25 to 30 seconds i honestly think it might be coming out a little slow so we might have to make the grind a little coarser but we'll see yeah, it's gonna be a little slow because it's already at 27 seconds, 30 seconds, and it only got to 21 grams. So, this is a bit under extracted coffee. I'm not even gonna taste it because it actually smells a bit sour. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna make it coarser. And so on this grinder, we're gonna make it coarser by moving the top to the right. I'm gonna do it right there. It was like about three notches because it was coming rather slow. If the coffee is coming out way too fast for you, then you're gonna have to make it finer, a finer grind. But for us, it was coming out too slow. 
So we made it coarser so that the coffee, um, so that the water can come out through the coffee a little bit faster. We're gonna take this out. I have to give this a rinse before I use it again. And then a wipe. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna weigh out our portafilter. And then put it in here. <laughs> Try for 18.5 grams since that's what we've uh, been doing. That's 16. That's 18.1, so we'll just do a little more. That should be good. 18.5, okay, right on the money. All right, so same thing. We're gonna do the prep work. So this looks a little more promising because we're already at 11 grams, 15, 16 seconds. Once I see it hit 37 grams, then we'll stop it. Okay, so 30 seconds, 37.3 grams. I'm gonna taste it and see how that tastes, but that was a lot better. And I actually already reprogrammed my machine to that, so the next time we do um, a shot, it'll already be programmed to the grind setting that we have. Oh, let's smell it. That smells so good. Oh my God. I think this is a winner. And look at the crema. Like the crema is so thick and luscious. I'm gonna mix it all in, and then we're gonna taste it. That's good. That is good. It was easy on the mouth and my palate. It was not bitter. It was easy to drink. You guys know how I feel about black coffee. Sometimes it's a little bitter. But when you get it right with the espresso machine, as opposed to like Nespresso, which is harder to control all of that, um, you can control all of this here. Black coffee is not as bad. It's crazy. Somebody on Instagram told me that when she went from espresso to an actual manual machine, she used less sugar because she felt like she didn't need to cover all the bitterness. Does that make sense? It tastes a lot cleaner. You could taste the notes. It's rather delicious. I still like my milk, but if you like black coffee, you might like the cardiologist blend from um, Brewpoint. All right, so I'm gonna make an iced coffee. And I know someone's gonna say, your shot's already dead because it's been a while, whatever. I, again, I don't think shots die. And if they do, then I like death because <laughs> they're so yummy. So I'm gonna use Get some ice, shall we? I just made a classic salted caramel latte. Oh my god, it is so good. I'm I'm happy I got two bags of this thing because Yummy, yummy, delicious. If you guys get a chance to check them out, this is not sponsored. I'm always preaching about Brewpoint, mainly because they're very local to me, so I could just drive out and get a bag instead of just ordering stuff. Let's do the sugar cubes. I'm gonna show you guys how to make them. This is my first time doing them, so bear with me if they don't come out well, but I hope they do because they all look so cute in the pictures. I wish I would've gotten like food coloring or something just to give them more like, detail but if these come out well then i'm gonna try to do them again with the season so let's do that i got this mold on amazon i just thought the flowers were so cute nice detail thin 
All right, so from what I saw, I, I'm gonna freehand everything, so bear with me. So the instructions were just create a mixture of sugar and water, just so that when it dries up, then it's more, you know, like malleable. So I'm gonna do white sugar and brown sugar flowers. We'll start with like two tablespoons of each. I love how this thing, I'm sure you guys know, but I got this little teddy bear on Amazon and you, what you do is you wet it and it, it stays in your brown sugar and your brown sugar always comes out nice and fluffy. Three tablespoons. Okay. And then next I'm just going to pour in some water and it's not a lot that they use, just enough to create a paste. Maybe I put a lot. <laughs> I'm gonna have to put more sugar. Like this. I really messed that up. Hope that this is good. It feels okay. Let's put this one, just a few drops. See, this is how it's supposed to look. Not liquidy. And then, I'm going to start in the middle so I don't make a mess around the board. recipes that I've seen they just let it sit and I think I have to just let it sit because I used a lot of water for the brown sugar especially so I'm just gonna leave them here I'm gonna cover them with some like saran wrap and then just let them sit and then hopefully like it said 30 minutes but I think it's gonna take a little longer okay I am excited about that hopefully I didn't use too much water I feel like I did but if I did and then within like a few hours if they're still kind of moist then I'm gonna just do the recipe all over again and then they should be ready in 30 minutes if I do it right. I should have just followed the recipe but I'm stubborn. So right now I'm gonna get rid of a lot of the Valentine's Day decor. I said it's not a, like I said it's not a lot um, but I do have some spring stuff in the basement that I want to take out and so let's just remove the heart stuff and then we'll get some springy stuff out. I didn't even use this glass or this cup this year. I'm not sure if I, I feel like I didn't use a lot, but I, I didn't film a lot of reels this year for Valentine's or any actually but I don't know I think I might set this mug aside to be one of the ones that I sell because I don't think I don't think I use it at all um, these I did use I think I did use those but this is usually for like an affogato and I haven't made one this year but we will see I'm gonna put this away for now and then I'm gonna go get the spring stuff Okay, I love how it looks. Minor details, minor changes. Like I said, I didn't have a lot of Valentine's Day decor, but just these little tweaks to the coffee bar are getting me excited for spring. I need to wash my dishes. Um, but even down to the soap, I changed the little details there. And then over here, I thought it would be a good idea to put something there because not only is it cute i feel like there's a lot of coffee grounds that just stay there sometimes and as much as i try to keep it clean i feel like there's always a need for a mat i think eventually i'll buy one that's just more permanent but for now 
kind of like how these little flowers look and then from far away just adds a little bit of color because it's very very bare over here these were actually from target spring collection last year so i don't know if they're gonna have something similar but if they do i'll make sure to share that but that's how it's looking and then i have a few easter related things these are little egg kitchen towels um and then i have to bring out the mugs that i have there's like two little rabbit mugs that i have but i'll do those later on down the line but i like how it looks what do you guys think let me know in the comment section below what you guys think what's your favorite detail i hope this inspires you guys to decorate or change little you know do little minor tweaks to your coffee bar just to get it ready for spring it's it's super fun. I, I love it. I hope this inspired you to spruce up your coffee bar. I hope it helped you out styling your coffee beans. I hope that by the time I'm editing this, the sugar cubes worked out. And if they did, let me know if you're going to give them a try. That is it for today's video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.